How to spot an amateur dating coach. Uh, there's been a lot of speculation around this. A lot of people are talking about it. There's a lot of amateur dating coaches accusing other people of being amateur dating coaches and frauds, etc. Uh, this is a contentious issue in the dating industry and especially in the pickup and just manosphere in general. And uh, I thought that I'd put a little bit more uh, a little bit more information out there on how to decipher whether someone truly is an amateur dating coach. Uh, top link in the description, by the way. Uh, it's a long blog post. I've put it. I've put in a lot of information in there. If you are one of those guys that is having trouble trying to figure out who is good at coaching and who is not. Um, there's a lot of misconceptions out there and this is going to be a long video so I recommend in the bottom right corner of this screen uh, you click on the the gear icon and speed it up to 1.25 or maybe even 1.5 speed uh, because I'm going to cover quite a lot of ground here and it might be boring if you played at this speed so Let's just get into it. I've got the blog post up and I'm going to just give you my interpretation. It's the it's the top link into the, the description, by the way. So, so, okay, to start with, what I've got here is, um, well, I guess I started with the difference between a PUA and a coach. <laughs> this is something that I think uh, a lot of people need to understand. There's There's obviously a guy that, can go out there and pick up a lot of girls and a lot of really hot girls and naturally hook every single set and get you some good infields. Now, if infields are your criteria for who is going to be the best coach for you, then, well, if I was to set up a, a, a marketing PUA company, I wouldn't be the face of it because you wouldn't need a coach, would you? You wouldn't need someone with a depth of understanding on game. What you need is a pretty boy that can just hook every set uh, so that it takes less time out there filming infields, right? And he can get hotter girls because if the market's that unaware of this, that's how you manipulate them, right? Um, and so that's what I would call a PUA, a pickup artist, someone who is good at game but only really getting girls because he's a pretty boy, right? And a pickup artist can be someone who, well, in my definition of a proper pickup artist, there's different levels. A pretty boy just getting lots of hot girls because he's already a pretty boy. Uh, he's getting girls on his level, right? Uh, someone that has proper skill is getting girls above his mate value. So there's different levels of skill within being a PUA. Now the transition between being a PUA, someone who's picking up a lot of girls, and someone who can coach you how to pick up girls are two totally different things. Look at look at uh, soccer, football. Look at any team sport out there. Uh, you grab a you grab a player uh, who was a superstar. It doesn't make them a good coach. Uh, I don't think Michael Jordan, when he turned to coaching, won any games. Uh, I don't think uh, Tiger Woods has created the next legend golf player. Um, I don't think Roger Federer or Rafael Nadal or any tennis players like that have created the next superstar tennis player. Uh, it's hard to transition. Some can, uh, but it takes time. It takes effort. They're two totally different skills. So someone who's good at picking up needs to spend a lot of time to convert into becoming a coach. But what we see in the industry is a lot of guys that just, uh, oh, I, I did a few shitty approaches, but I'm a pretty boy and I hooked every single set. I pumped out a few infields and everybody wants some coaching from me. These people don't have a depth of understanding. Um, and, well, they're part of the problem, right? They're also the same guys that will call everyone else a fraud. <laughs> And there's a lot of ego out there too. Uh, some guys in Sydney, they spot me, they walk by. Uh, there's one pretty boy that's like 25. He's kind of, kind of jacked, and he's uh, he's kind of autistic. He's like a um, developer or whatever. You see him walk by with some cute Asian girl, 
Um, and he looks at me, it's like, yes, I've got a girl, I've better, got better games than you. You're 16 years younger than me. <laughs> uh, at your age, I was getting a lot better. <laughs> um, there's a difference between a PUA and a coach, okay? I'm tr um, I go into a little bit more depth in the blog post on this. Uh, just explaining it to you is a little bit more difficult to uh, get my point across, but when I'm writing it down, it just gets my ideas you know, a, a lot more clearer, right? Now, the second one is Google is not a meritocracy. Uh, it's not an even playing field on Google and YouTube. Most of the coaches out there, uh, they're from America, aren't they? You notice that? You notice some of the biggest and most famous coaches out there are all from America? Have you noticed that? Does that mean that American men are just the most charismatic men on planet Earth? Or is it that Google being an American company uh, just gives a little bit more juice, well, a lot more juice, to American people who pay taxes within America because the more juice they bring to America, the more business they bring from all over the world to America, the more money flows into America, the more taxes those people pay to the American government. Google's an American company. It's designed to benefit Americans, not to benefit you if you are outside of America. So one thing I have noticed is that you have a really shitty, like dead, dead, dead set, absolute fucking fraud American coach. And all he has to do is steal some keywords from some other, there's one guy out there, he, uh, he's absolutely shit. He lives at home with his parents. His parents are rich. He steals the titles of his videos from some uh, really competent, hard-working, blogging girl. He steals his titles from a girl in South America somewhere. And uh, those titles, he just steals them, just twists them around, makes up his own shit. <laughs> he's, he's in this nice room in his, like, his parents', parents house. He's not even an independent man, so why is he teaching men anything? Uh, and he, he puts out advice where all of the advice is stolen from uh, Antolio Polopi or whatever her name is. You just put it, the title of his videos in Google and you find out, you go, every single one is just copied from this girl. And his thumbnails are copied from her as well. And this guy's getting a ton of juice in the Google algorithm, which is evidence that uh, the keywords and the content is not relevant. It's just the fact that he's American and the girl he's stealing all of the content from is in South America and Google prefers to send more juice to Americans. That's why when you have a look at all the red pill guys, you look at all of the pickup coaches, you look at all, like even the black pill guy, everything, right? They're all in America. And so if you're outside of America, you get a little bit less juice. You get a little bit you get a little bit more juice um, uh, or more ranking preference if you're in Canada. I think that's just because Canada's so close to America. Um, but outside, I've noticed that there's a very there's a, a similarity between say uh, Australia and Britain uh, or any other European countries. Uh, we get about the same amount of ranking, but. I've seen some American coaches out there, they can, they can literally pull out their phone and just go for a walk and go, yeah, so you just need to fuck bitches and then you just put it in them, subscribe, 100,000 views. <laughs> the, 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 you have to be uh, far better at your craft to uh, get some juice in Google if you're outside of America. That's a fact that cannot be disputed, and the fact of the matter is you can just look at all of the coaches, they're all American. Uh, and so you have to be, you have to do something really special to gather some sort of traction uh, in the Google algorithm, and they will only allow certain people, a few people to do that. You have to do something outrageous to get that juice. Um, that's one issue and so you have a lot of Americans battling through the algorithm and calling each other out and complaining about that but it's like 
they're already getting a lot. Uh, you very rarely see them complaining about people outside, do, do you? Uh, it's because, well, they're getting all the juice. Now, experience doesn't always mean competency. Uh, this is very important uh, because what I've noticed is that there's some guys that they'll go to a boot camp, they'll get some experience uh, with some coach and they'll learn some type of game. Uh, then they what they'll do is they'll usually become like a uh, what is it like an unpaid uh, intern or something for some pickup company and they'll learn all the marketing and it will seem like their experience but all they're really doing is literally copy pasting the exact same openings uh, and when if you have a look at my uh, all of my infield breakdowns you'll notice that when I notice a pattern and pattern is an art. If you're using canned lines and routines, you're using the same openers, you've got a, a pattern of how you're running your game and, and it's clearly defined how you're doing that, well, you're not very good at it. You're not very good at it at all. All you're doing is using canned lines and routines and I can grab some bum off the street, teach him those canned lines and routines and send him out there. Easy, it's not an art form if you are repeating the same thing and on top of that it means that you're not really good at what you're doing and you're not doing it consistently and all the time if you're using the same lines it's not an art this is the sweet art of cold approach and if you were to use the same canned lines and routines all the time well you're not very good at it because you get bored um, and experience doesn't always mean competency there's a lot of marketers out there that are stuck in intermediate purgatory and they just need to get to that little intermediate purgatory level and then focus on advanced marketing right you notice that a lot of them they have lots of highly edited videos that are snap 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 they'll just cut it all together make it fast and snappy when their information is real surface level bullshit that really doesn't make any sense it's just like copy paste the same crap from someone else and they're all kids in their 20s and nothing that they don't really have a depth of understanding or knowledge on what they're teaching uh, experience doesn't always uh, convert into competency now if you're paying for coaching this is another one. So many of them, they, uh, they will charge you a lot of money and you might only get four or five hours of coaching per day. Uh, how many guys, they say, yeah, five hours a day game coaching per day, that's it. <laughs> uh, are you getting the, the proper amount of coaching that you should be getting per day for the amount of money that you're paying? I know that the guys that I've been coaching, I will, I will go out there and we will start gaming until they're exhausted. I'm like, you, you, you're tired yet? You're cool? Let's go. I, I, think, I think one day with one of my clients, we did a 14 hour day. <laughs> uh, we've done some big days. Um, you know, if the guy's tired, obviously, we, we stop. Uh, but I'm making sure that they get um, their money's worth and that's important because you're paying for a service you're not just paying for uh, someone to come out for a couple of hours and teach you a few little things here the game's complicated game is difficult and you need to have a depth of understanding on what you're doing and you're not going to get that within five hours um, that's why so many people they they do coaching and then you know they fail uh, it takes a long time to get this. It's complicated and if you're paying thousands of dollars for a, a few hours of coaching, you're not really getting your money's worth, are you? Does he cold approach daily or ever? There's some coaches out there where I'd question whether they've ever done any cold approach. Um, I would argue that some of them, they've only really done cold approach just for their infields. And it shows. Um, these guys just don't know what they're doing. And you can see it. Uh, it goes back to the canned lines and routines and intermediate purgatory. And all you have to do is watch a few videos online and go out there and spam a few up. And um, if you're a 9 out of 10 and you're approaching 6s, you're going to hook. <laughs> and you're going to number close a lot of fake numbers and flaky numbers. and um, Or pay some actresses, which is very common. Um, 
but is this person doing it all the time? Now, every day I go outside, I am approaching, it's a lifestyle. This is, it reminds me of surfing, uh, because when I was surfing, everybody that was surfing, we all knew that surfing was a lifestyle. You know, before school or before work, you wake up at 5 a.m., you check the surf, you make sure the wind and the, the direction of the um, the swell and how big big the waves are and is it a good day to go for a surf, and you check it every day. Uh, and if you take a couple months off surfing, you, well, it, it takes a long time to get back into it. The same as cold approach pickup. It's a daily thing. And that doesn't mean you spam it up every day. It means that you need to be consistent every day. You need to be turning up every day. And every time you walk out that front door, uh, you switch on. Game starts. Every time. Every opportunity. You are taking every opportunity when you leave home. Now, is your coach doing that? If he's not, then I would argue that he probably is an amateur. And if he's an amateur, what's he doing coaching you? Pick up coaches who cannot approach in winter. <laughs> this might piss off a few people. Uh, I'm in Sydney, Australia. The majority of my game has been done in Australia. First world country. Uh, some people argue it's a very difficult place to get laid. Uh, not to mention, I'm 41. Uh, I'm not a pretty boy in my 20s. And I'm consistently getting laid. I'm consistently approaching. And in the depth of winter, I can still approach which means that it is a daily thing for me. It is not a hobby, it's a lifestyle, okay? Now, how many coaches live in Russia or Britain or somewhere in Europe or somewhere where like half of the year it's cold and if they can't do any game for six months of the year, if this is really a skill thing, if this is really something that over time you can get better at and it's complicated, if they can take six months off, what are they teaching you? Is it really that skillful what they're teaching you? Is there a depth of understanding? Are they doing it every single day? Because if they're not, I would argue that they're probably not that good, no matter how good their marketing is. You see, I can get myself a virgin, get a virgin to come out, and I could spend a month every single day filming infields. And I'll get some magnificent, I probably could even uh, trial this. Grab a virgin and get them to <laughs> do a lot of approaches and see how many clients come in and how much uh, juice he gets in uh, the Google algorithm. We could probably do it in America. Um, but I would argue that if he's not doing it every single day, then he probably isn't that good and that might be controversial uh, some guys in Europe um, or in colder colder areas in winter they go fly around the world right they go to somewhere warmer and they make sure that they're doing a lot of cold approach I think it's important to understand that they need to be consistently turning up I think it's important Facebook group PUA coaches Ah, uh, now um, what usually happens in the Facebook groups is they start up a Facebook group, they have a team. You'll notice that almost all of the Facebook groups have teams. Uh, why do they have a team? Because what they do is they get people and they, they try to poach uh, guys from other groups. Usually every guy is in every Facebook group, but usually what they do is they poach guys from all of the other groups, they get them into their group. Then they create a whole bunch of fake accounts, okay? And so whenever they post something under their own name, all of the fake accounts, then they log into all of their fake accounts and they go, oh my God, you're a legend, Dave. Oh, you're a legend. Oh, that's so good. And they like it and they thumbs it up. And then if anyone asks a question, they use one of their fake profiles. So what it is, is it's a DHP. It's, they're displaying high value, but they're faking it. The same as everything. Everything they do is fake. Everything that they do is a facade. And I'm not saying all of the Facebook guys are like this. I'm saying that some of them do, okay? So they have these fake accounts that constantly prop themselves up. 
and so it's a DHV as if they're actually good at anything when really they're just frauds, right? So if you have all these fake accounts telling you how awesome you are, everybody else in that group's going to go, wow, everyone else thinks they're cool. They got fake accounts saying that they, they slept with a billion girls and their coaching was really awesome and they're posting field reports because their coaching was awesome. And it's all fake. The whole thing's a facade. Okay, so some of the most successful Facebook groups use this method, the DHV method. And then some of the DHV method it permeates into their coaching. Okay, so the fake accounts, fake displays of of high value and then over time it compounds and people start it creates this virtuous cycle but in the very beginning it was created artificially because they they weren't good and then after a while someone who's paid a lot of good money to get coaching from some of the Facebook coaches they it's like a it's like a, a psychological it's like a dissidence within their own mind they, they pay a lot of money for the coaching, so therefore it makes them believe that they got good coaching and then they go tell other people that they got good coaching, they got good results. When really all they're doing is justifying their expensive costs uh, because they don't want to look like a fool. Um, and so it all starts with displaying high value and having all of these other people making them out to be superstars, pay a lot of money for their coaching, and then it just grows. And you, don't, you never know who you're really speaking to. It's funny. You might get a DM saying, I got coaching with them. You should definitely get coaching with them. But it's really one of their fake accounts messaging you. Keep that in mind. Uh, from nerd to master pickup artist. <laughs> the evolution story. So what a lot of these guys are trying to do here is um, they say, look, I'm like you. I was a virgin too. I didn't get laid until I was in my 30s. <laughs> and, uh, you know, and then I found this book, this method, these secret pickup lines, and it turned me into a superstar. And now that I'm a superstar, I've put in all the hard work and I can teach that to you. So you should pay me for my shitty coaching. <laughs> uh, because we're, it's a, um, I've only realized this recently because uh, I'm not a marketer or a salesman. I'm someone who knows how to do pickup and how to coach it, which is a total different skill to marketing, okay? And I discovered that part of influence is that people like to, they listen to people like them. So for instance, if you're a 25 year old guy that uh, is struggling with women, if another 25 year old guy tells you, look, when I was younger, you know, I didn't have any luck with women. We're the same age, we're the, we're the same type of person. You should get coaching with me because I figured it out. It's like a, um, uh, I remember I was reading a book where this guy was talking about teaching his three-year-old son how to swim. And his son was scared of the water. Uh, and what he did was he took his son and uh, to a to have like a swimming session with another kid that was the same age three-year-old kid and the other three-year-old kid just jumped in the pool and started swimming and this guy his son instantly just jumped in without fear and started swimming and said wow you can swim now to his son and his son said yeah well Billy's three years old too and if he can do it I can do it and that's where the evolution story comes from they're just trying to meet you on a psychological level to manipulate you. When really, you want someone who can coach you, not someone that's similar to you or someone that you just look up to like they're a superstar. Just because someone's charismatic and they're, they're sexy and they're, they seem like a superstar to you doesn't mean they're going to be a good coach because you're ultimately out for the results, aren't you? Uh, and if someone is just similar to you, they're the same race, religion, creed, height, nationality, you name it, doesn't mean they're going to be a good coach for you either, okay? Um, but that's up for you to decide. I'm just talking common sense here. <laughs> um, let's move on to the next one. Uh, oh, what they do is they discredit uh, naturals. 
the idea here is it goes against common sense and this is why I uh, discussed this early on they discredit naturals they say oh well the naturals been successful forever so therefore they don't know what they're doing so therefore how can they coach you it's kind of the same thing in reverse because if you think about it the same guys that tell you they say that they were virgins when they were younger they had no idea then they found these magic pickup lines and in a short period of time they became a superstar so they can teach you now if if they've been uh, they were a virgin all the way through to now they've and and they've then they picked up some magic method this is the amount of time they've been doing pickup so they're a PUA, uh, and a percentage of that, they had to transition into a coach, right? We've already covered this. So how, many, how much time were they a PUA, and how much time were they a coach, and how long did it take them to transition? I would argue the natural that's been doing pickup for this long, and was getting laid in high school, and getting a lot of success in high school, and then after many years of being a pickup artist, then transitioned into a coach, I'm kind of pitching myself, it's shameless plug for myself, but I was getting laid when I was younger. I didn't have any troubles with that. And it took me through my 30s all the way up until now for me to really start to gauge my, my skill when it comes to uh, being a coach. This much, much experience versus a newbie guy that just wants to manipulate you with the, the, the method of uh, we're similar, we're both three-year-olds. <laughs> it's like the three-year-old saying that the other three-year-old makes a good coach because they're the same age when really uh, the swimming coach that's like in his 20s is far better of a coach, right? Uh, but this manipulation is very real. Uh, so you've got guys that are they actually tell you that they were bad in high school and they flip and they say naturals don't know what they're talking about. It's like, well, a natural has a lot more experience than as some newbie that learned from someone else and you learned these uh, canned lines and methods. And natural's got a depth of understanding that these newbies don't have. I don't know, common sense. Sorry, uh, I use common sense. <laughs> um... Starts his pickup business while living with his parents. Now, the reason why I think this is an issue is because I think that this is connected to self-development. And if this person is not an independent man and he's living in a first world country, which most of the American po coaches are, uh, and he's not out there on his own battling, you know, paying rent, Get, just getting some money together, put food on the table, uh, as well as doing pickup. He's just living at home with mummy and daddy, with no pressures, no stresses, uh, and then he's going to come out and coach you, because pickup is related to self-development. You need to go through some adversity, I would argue, right? Because uh, most of you guys out there that, that, that are getting into pickup, uh, it's tough, right? Is it easy? Can you just go over to all the tens and then just throw them over your shoulder and take them home it's that easy it's tough there's a lot of rejection there's a lot of adversity that needs to come with that um, and that comes with a mindset almost like a stoic mindset of battling through all of this adversity and some kid that's living at home with his parents uh, and he doesn't have any problems at all uh, and he's going to coach you when he just he's got no real life experience at all what use is he what use is he to you when you hit a rough patch uh, what is he going to teach you well, you say go go home and live with your parents and then just hit the clubs every night that's my solution to everything because life's easy uh yeah, it's kind of bullshit and some of them have gone from living with their parents to now making a quarter of a million a year and now that they're doing that, they're living the high life, but they've always got that backup. I think that's a bit of an issue. A pickup coach who's learning it himself. My understanding is, correct me if I'm wrong, I'm, I'm not exactly sure about this, but I was told that uh, Neil Strauss was learning it himself while writing, he was writing the book, right? So 
uh, and then later on, he still wasn't any good at pickup. Uh, but what he was doing was he was teaching people pickup when he didn't really know it himself. So what he was doing was he was learning pickup while teaching his clients. Uh, and it just seems a bit fake to me. Shouldn't you be coaching someone only after you've got those skills? Um, you know, you go to university, get yourself a PhD, you become a professor, then you teach other people at university. You don't just come in on day one <laughs> and then start running the class. And that's what a lot of these guys are doing. And then we get back to the marketing. We, we got these kids in their 20s that uh, pump out a few infields, uh, approaching a few sixes, when they're really good looking guys, and they're really just marketers, right? Uh, and when they're coaching you, they're just repeating methods that they've stolen from other real coaches out there. Uh, and so the pickup coach who's learning it himself is a bit of a danger to your bank balance, really. Um, oh yeah, the ideologue. The ideologue's another one. Uh, someone who only teaches one thing. Now, I've been put in a bit of a box of indirect, but that's, that's incorrect. I'm not just an indirect coach. Um, I am differentiating myself because it takes a lot more skill to do indirect. Uh, but certain guys need to go direct, especially in the nightclubs. I go super direct in the nightclubs, so I'm not, never ever going to get laid. You have to go direct in the nightclubs. Day game, you know. So there's, there's nuance to everything. And there's some guys out there that teach one specific thing and that's the cross they're gonna die on. <laughs> and they're gonna sit there and they're gonna argue for it all the way. Uh, that's an ideologue. That's not someone with a, with a depth of understanding or knowledge in game. That's a newbie. That's a newbie that's found one small area of game that works for them and wants to pitch it to everybody and wants to argue with you over it for no reason because they just don't have the skill or the depth of understanding maybe they're taking every winter off they're not gaming every day uh, maybe they're just newbies that got this from someone else these guys just they're not real uh pickup artists and they're not real coaches because they just don't have the skill or the depth of understanding and they haven't put the time and effort in to actually understand it these are the guys that are ideologues um Yes, um, I got a lot of ones here. The, the dating coach with a team, they're just marketers. Uh, infields are not evidence they can coach. Yeah, people like to talk about infields being everything. Uh, I like to refer to like Customado coaching. Um, he, used to, he was the coach of uh, Mike Tyson. Uh, I think he broke his hand and his arm when he was younger fighting uh, and then he became a coach he became a boxing coach uh, and that coach created Mike Tyson now um, there's quite a few of them out there that are, that are like that they 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 went out there and they 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 did the did game or they were they were doing a lot of pickup and it came to the point where, you know, they're a bit older, they've got a lot of information, not a knowledge, um, a lot of depth of knowledge, and they transitioned into a coach over time. Customado was involved in boxing for, what was it, like 50 years before Tyson came along, something ridiculous like that. Um, he, was in, he, was, he was coaching for maybe 20 years before Tyson came along. So... Um, what we do is we have guys that are either paying actresses, we've got pretty boys approaching sixes, um, and just number closing fake numbers. And someone who knows what they're talking about can see straight through that. Um, yep, yeah, handsome guys make good infields. Infields can be faked. The married dating coach. Now, this, this, this isn't across the board. Now, a guy that was doing a lot of um, pick up himself he could have got married but as long as he has a large amount of uh, skill he's got a body of work he's been in it for a very long time and he's got married and he decided that he's going to continue coaching 
I would say that's kind of justified. But there's that's a, a minority. There's, there's very few of them out there. And um, I would say that a lot of them, when they get married, then they, they quit coaching altogether. Maybe their wife doesn't like it. Uh, it's something that they just, they walk away, they quit. But there's, a, there's so many married dating coaches or gurus out there that um, they never really did any cold approach. They never really know, they don't really know anything about cold approach. They ne don't really know much about the dating industry except for copying and pasting something. Um, and it's just like a marketing scam. They're married, they're living with their wife and kids and they're giving advice to men when they're not, they're not really qualified to do so. And I think it's a little bit outrageous that anyone would listen to them or see them as gurus because they don't really um, know what they're talking about. Uh, they're literally virgins in the, the pickup industry. Um, but there's some guys that have built up a body of knowledge and a body of work. And uh, some guys that were in pickup for a very long time, then they got married. These guys are worth listening to. But they're in the minority. There's not many of them around, actually. So let's move on to the next one. The marketer, the fake pickup guru. I think I've kind of covered that. The texting or online dating expert. <laughs> um, yeah. There's some guys out there that are texting experts. It's like, it doesn't make sense to me that anyone would listen to them. So they're a texting expert. That's what they do, they text girls. Um, anyone can figure out how to text girls. It's not a complicated thing. It really isn't. Online dating really isn't that complicated. Go out there and make sure you got the best photos you, you can, you know? And um, if you get enough contacts coming in, you can trial a whole bunch of different things. Uh, texting and online dating isn't really an issue. Whenever I travel, I use online dating to pipeline numbers so that when I arrive in this other country, because I've got like two weeks in that country, I want to hit the ground running, right? Uh, and so to hit the ground running, I need to use online profiles and I need to, you know, passport them into the country that I'm traveling to. And, you know, I'll, I'll arrive with like 30 or 40 numbers uh, in that country. It's not difficult to do. Now, if someone's out there teaching you how to text, there's a very good chance that the texting guru is just getting a lot of juice through, uh, through YouTube because they're probably American. It's not because they really have a skill, it's just they're lucky to be American. You can almost sell anything in America if you're an American coach. Uh, but I don't know how much that's going to help you because I, w I can't even imagine that being helpful to anybody, to be honest. Um, I, like, I can figure it out myself. Just message the girl. It's not that complicated. Um, female dating, dating coaches. Um, fish teaching you to fish. <laughs> yeah, I think that one's pretty self-explanatory. I think I've noticed that there will be female dating coaches that are just hot and you'll have guys that are just struggling with women and what they do is they just trust the female dating coach because they're attracted to the female, female dating coach. Um, maybe they, they don't get on well with men, you know, and they, they're afraid of men or something and so they want to spend all their money and give it to this female dating coach guru. And uh, female dating coaches are uh, above any criticism, really. You, you, know that you can't see feminists going after female dating coaches, can you? Uh, they're only going after the men because they hate the men, you see. So a lot of the female dating coaches can say and do whatever they want, and they're pretty much uh, Teflon. Nothing sticks to them. And uh, I would say that none of them can really be of any service to you. And you will notice that a lot of them, they hire male assistants. <laughs> and those male assistants, so you've got a female dating coach, those male assistants 
will then end up going off on their own and doing coaching. You realize that uh, the female co the female coach, dating coach, will then hire assistants to go teach you how to do cold approach. You might as well just go to someone who's been doing a lot of cold approach their entire lives uh, to come and teach you how to do that uh, instead of just relying on a female dating coach that can't teach you to fish because they're a fish they're not going to be out there cold approaching with you and they've got to hire male, hire male assistants to teach you how to do cold approach anyway so it seems like a waste of money to me when you can really just go to someone who can teach you cold approach in my opinion there's only really one way to go about this someone who's going to mic you up teach you how to do day game or night game cold approach cold approach cold approach Everything's in field. Nothing else matters as far as I'm concerned. Obviously, when the guy is teaching you cold approach, he's going to look at your texts. He's going to teach you texts, opening texts. He's going to be listening to your approaches. Uh, this is where it matters. Uh, texting gurus, female coaches, marketers. Um, and finally, I think I think I just got tired writing this. It's a, it's a really large blog post. Uh, he's a kid. He's a kid with no life experience. Uh, it's the same as being that three-year-old kid uh, realizing that, oh, well, the other three-year-old kid can swim, so that means I can. It, break, it makes it more real to them. But that doesn't mean that the other three-year-old kid can uh, get them to the next level and teach them proper game or give them a depth of knowledge and a depth of experience. Um, yeah, this final part of it, he's a kid, it's almost insulting to see kids teaching other guys how to do pickup when they have no life experience or wisdom themselves. Um, sometimes you will see a kid with no experience uh, that, you know, has no, no life experience as well, living at home with his parents, never dealt with any adversity, while getting all the juice in the algorithm because he's American. You've got an American kid living at home with his parents with no experience at all, no life experience, and they're coaching. Um, unfortunately, that's this is partially why this blog post and what I've just discussed with you guys today is partially why the dating industry has such a bad reputation. Um, all of those things com combined is giving the entire industry a bad reputation in my opinion. And so, yeah, hopefully that's been informative. Top link in the description and you can have a read of that blog post yourself. And um, yeah, I'll uh, see you guys in the next video.